Mr. Speaker, uh, I rise proudly today in support of House Resolution 1339, the rule for three crucial bills, each of which will protect an essential institution in American government and public life that came under serious attack in the previous administration. Our federal civil service, whistleblowers acting against public corruption, and the Census Bureau. All three bills were marked up and passed by the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. H.R. 302, the Preventing a Patronage System Act, is a bipartisan bill led by Congressman Connolly of Virginia and Congressman Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania. This legislation will insulate our civil service against partisan political interference and ensure that no future president can fire government experts and civil servants simply to replace them with their own political loyalists and sycophants. The civil, the civil service system was created in the 19th century with the explicit purpose of ending the so-called spoil system and ensuring that federal employees are hired, promoted, and fired based on their qualifications and performance, not their political party connections or the political favors and services that they're willing to render to elected officials. The merit-based federal workforce exists to effectively implement federal laws and programs passed by Congress and signed into law by the President and translate those laws and programs into concrete results and benefits for the American people. Professional civil servants like scientists, engineers, meteorologists, statisticians, economic researchers, and policy analysts must be able to do their jobs and advise government officials and the public based on empirical methods, facts, and data, not ideological filters and bars of political correctness and without fear of retaliation and discharge for political reasons. But the previous administration attempted to turn our civil service, Mr. Speaker, into a top-down political and ideological party machine, the kind that the original architects of the civil service tried to dismantle in the 19th century. In October 2020, the former president issued Executive Order 13957 to create Schedule F, a sweeping new employment category for career civil servants who work on public policy issues. Schedule F specifically targeted about 50,000 presently nonpartisan policy experts, many of them holding advanced degrees and having served for decades as policy experts across different administrations with presidents from different political parties. For these civil servants, Schedule F would have stripped away their rights, their merit-based legal protections, and their professional independence. Civil servants transferred into the new Schedule F could have been fired and replaced at any time for any political or ideological reason or for no reason at all given by a hostile administration. The 50,000 civil servants deemed to be involved in formulating policy could have been swept up in a Schedule F political purge and replaced with unqualified loyalists and flunkies with potentially catastrophic consequences for national security, the continuity of governance, and the even-handed and effective enforcement of federal laws and programs. The president already has the opportunity to appoint more than 4,000 political appointees. But Schedule F sought to go much further in radically transforming the civil service into an instrument of the chosen political ends and designs of the president. Thankfully, President Joe Biden rescinded the order in January 2021. However, several top Republicans have already expressed support for picking right up where the previous administration left off with a new Schedule F. Our civil servants <clears throat> must be hired based on their merits and then evaluated based on their actual job performance in office, not their political party membership, not their ideological viewpoints, and not their political campaign activism. Indeed, there are already processes in place for evaluating federal employees' actual job performance, which is why in 2021, more than 10,000 federal employees were removed from their jobs for not living up to job expectations. That's how you deal with people who are not actually doing their jobs. 
This bill is precisely about ensuring that civil servants will be evaluated based on their job performance and not the partisan political goals or extracurricular demands of a particular administration. As a member of the Oversight Committee, which considered this legislation carefully and reported it favorably, and the proud representative of tens of thousands of federal workers in Maryland's beautiful 8th District, I am proud to advance this bill and urge all of my colleagues to support its passage on a bipartisan basis. We have an urgent mandate to protect the historic merit-based civil service and the integrity of the federal government against anyone who would turn the clock back more than a century to allow presidents to convert our federal workforce in service of agreed upon federal laws and programs into an instrument of personal ambition, campaign reelection, or party patronage. Now turning to H.R. 2988, the Bipartisan Whistleblower Protection Improvement Act of 2021, led by Chairwoman Maloney. This is another piece of critical legislation in defense of another critical democratic safeguard. Whistleblowers are a great American institution and an important mechanism for guaranteeing the integrity of government. Our protection of whistleblowers reflects the fact that in our system of government, we have checks and balances <clears throat> We have checks and balances all the way down. An individual federal employee can hold even the most powerful government officials accountable to the rule of law, which binds all of us. Whistleblowers in American history have exposed self-dealing, bribery, kickbacks, sweetheart contracts, lost and stolen federal property, national security failures and criminal cover-ups, other political corruption, war crimes and rape and sexual harassment in the military, major public health violations, episodes of environmental and toxic contamination, and the systematic waste or pilfering of taxpayer dollars. This bill will improve current protections for whistleblowers by clearly prohibiting retaliatory investigations and other actions against federal employees who share information with Congress, the House of Representatives, or the Senate, or with their supervisor. The bill limits the public disclosure of the identity of whistleblowers and extends whistleblower protections to new categories of federal officers and employees, including public health service workers and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's commissioned officers. The bill also contains provisions to ensure a timely and fair procedure for whistleblowers facing discrimination and retaliation. Currently, the backlog at the Merit Systems Protection Board means that some whistleblowers may wait years for a hearing to be scheduled on their claims. This bill grants whistleblowers access to a jury trial in federal district court if the Merit Systems Protection Board does not render a timely decision in their case. Whistleblowers are integral to government transparency and accountability in our country. I strongly support this bill to ensure whistleblowers can come forward without fear of reprisal or punishment. The last bill before us, Mr. Speaker, H.R. 8326, the Ensuring a Fair and Accurate Census Act, also led by Chairwoman Maloney, will protect the Census Bureau against future efforts at political interference, and it will ensure the Bureau's independence in the performance of its essential duties. The Census is a constitutional mandate and imperative. The U.S. Constitution requires an actual enumeration of the whole number of persons in the country for apportioning representatives among the states in Congress. The census is an expression of the original principle that democracy must rest on the Jeffersonian idea of the consent of the governed. And therefore, we need to know everyone who is here and part of the sovereign people of the nation. The census determines congressional apportionment of House seats and the allocation of trillions of dollars in federal spending. Even many businesses in the private sector rely on Census Bureau statistics to guide their decisions. The previous administration's spectacular contempt for our constitutional system was on full display during its many efforts to interfere with the 2020 census for purposes of political gain. The effort to complete 
a comprehensive and effective census was undermined at every turn by efforts such as the unlawful plot to add the citizenship question to the, for, to the short form, which was struck down by the Supreme Court, or the installation of a record-breaking number of highly partisan political appointees to the ranks of the Bureau's leadership. The reforms contained in the Ensuring a Fair and Accurate Census Act will safeguard the integrity of the census count against this type of sinister political interference in the many years to come. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I will reserve the balance of my time. Thank you. Gentlemen.